Hello and welcome everyone to Overcoming the Number One Raw Food Diet Pitfall. During our combined almost 60 years of experience with raw food and plant-based dietary approaches, we have observed a variety of challenges that people may experience with these ways of eating. But one in particular really stands out. So today, we are happy to share with you this pitfall and how to avoid it. For those of you who don't know us yet, I'm Dr. Karen Dina. And I'm Dr. Rick Dina. We're both chiropractic physicians with a strong interest in plant-based and raw food nutrition, as well as the functional medicine approach to health. We're board certified and licensed in the state of California. After I graduated from chiropractic school, I came out here to Northern California and spent four years on staff at True North Health Center, where I was involved in the supervision of water fasting patients in a medically supervised environment. Dr. Karen did a summer internship at True North when she was earning her doctorate degree. Fast forwarding a few years, we are the developers of the Science of Raw Food Nutrition curriculum that we taught in person for 10 years at a raw culinary school in Northern California. We're also the authors of the Raw Food Nutrition Handbook. We're also the hosts of the Raw for Life Summit 2016 and the International Raw Food Summit 2017. From this background and from speaking for many, many years at different conferences and events, we have become known for our thoroughness and scientific accuracy, our ability to make complex subjects easy to understand, and our encouraging approach that takes unnecessary hurdles out of the way of people pursuing better health. You'll get a tiny sliver, a tiny taste of each of those in today's webinar, where we'll break through some misunderstandings about raw food nutrition that can get in the way of people being successful in their quest for better health. When Dr. Karen and I got started on our raw food journeys over 27 and 30 years ago, respectively, there were far fewer resources available than there are today. Due to the internet, access to information about raw food nutrition is easier than ever before, and there's more of it than ever before, but is the internet really the best place to find accurate, useful information on raw food that will sustain your maximum health over the long term, hopefully for a lifetime? I know when I go to various Facebook groups about raw food, watch the YouTube videos, read tweets, etc., on the one hand, I see that there's lots of good information out there, but on the other hand, I see that there is an enormous amount of inaccurate information as well. And it's at those times when I make the connection and realize why so many people who start out on a vegan or a raw food path don't keep up with it over the long term. So many of our students and our patients have also told us that they've tried to figure things out by this method and they're really confused as well. We are committed to helping as many of you as we can take the healthiest, most effective approach possible, supporting you in your pursuit of optimal health. And having said that, there is a certain realm of optimal health, but within that realm, there's plenty of room for individual variation. So this can help you find the approach that works best for you individually, all things considered. I'll leave you with a quote from a former student of ours who took our Science of Raw Food Nutrition curriculum in person, which is the precursor to our expanded and updated Mastering Raw Food Nutrition online curriculum that I'll tell you more about at the end of this webinar. Denise from Alberta, Canada says, There isn't a better course available designed to arm anyone desiring to improve the health of themselves and others, allowing them to weed through news reports, marketing, and research. Add on top of that a balanced, open approach, presented in an inspiring yet modest manner. 
So she's saying we're not out there making outrageous claims. I believe that's what she meant by our modest manner. But the inspiring part is that when you have accurate information, you can see how incredible a plant-based and better yet a raw food diet can actually be and how much of a difference it can make in your health. We now have a new, improved, expanded, and updated online version of our previous curriculum, as you can see here, called Mastering Raw Food Nutrition. And now it's easier to access this than ever before on your own schedule without having to leave home and be far away from your family and your job and without having to pay for travel and lodging while actually getting more direct interaction with us than our in-person students like Denise did. We'll talk more about this at the end of the webinar for those of you who would like to continue your education about raw food nutrition. One last piece of information before we begin. The information and opinions expressed by us in this webinar are not intended to be used as medical advice and should not be used to diagnose or treat any medical condition or as a substitute for individual health care. This webinar is presented for education only and with the understanding that we are not liable for misconception, misuse, or adverse effects resulting from its use. Any type of dietary change, nutritional therapy, or fasting should always be undertaken with the supervision of a qualified healthcare practitioner. Now, we may end up being those healthcare practitioners for some of you, but watching this webinar does not establish a doctor patient relationship between us and you. Having said that, I will let Dr. Karen share with you what got her started on her raw food path over 27 years ago. I found raw food at a time when I was experiencing notable fatigue for which there was apparently no answer. I was in college at the time and was sleeping 10, 12, and sometimes even more hours per night and still waking up non-refreshed. I saw three medical professionals, and after multiple lab tests and evaluations, I had a diagnosis, fatigue of unknown origin. They had a whole list of everything that I didn't have, but could not pinpoint the source of my fatigue. I asked every single one of them if my fatigue may have had anything to do with my college diet and lifestyle. All of them emphatically said no. Things started to change, however, when a friend gave me a copy of a book that discussed vegan diets and the connection between diet and health. I also learned about the connections between diet and the environment and the way animals are treated. With all of these compelling arguments, I was open to giving this approach a try, and I became vegan. In addition to feeling good about eating compassionately and leaving a lighter footprint on the earth, I was so excited to find that my fatigue actually started to improve, despite what the so-called experts, in this case the medical professionals, said would happen. This personal experience opened the door to my thinking that diet really could make a difference in health and left me open to exploring other opportunities. When I learned about and implemented a raw food diet, my energy soared far beyond impressive improvements I had experienced by eating vegan. In our three-part video series, I shared the story of my introduction to raw food. Long story short, my fatigue vanished along with a variety of other symptoms I'd had for years, and I had more energy than I knew what to do with. I could not remember a time when I felt better. I started to look healthier and slept better. I enjoyed exercising and my digestion improved. I was so inspired by the health results I was experiencing that I felt compelled to learn more about the inner workings of the human body, nutrition, and the diet health connection. I really wanted to immerse myself in learning as much as I could, so I earned a second undergraduate degree in biology and received doctorate-level education in naturopathic medicine and chiropractic, which helped me put everything that I observed into perspective on a much deeper level. 
And over the years, I've refined my approach to raw food and tailored it to my individual needs. And we can show you how to do this too. So this brings us to the main topic of this webinar. Dr. Rick will now talk about the number one raw food diet pitfall and how to overcome it. And before we get started, it's important to note that the information he addresses here is just a minute sampling of the content we teach, which gives you an idea of the depth and breadth of the topics covered in our classes. We'll start by looking at just a small excerpt from the first week of our year-long Mastering Raw Food Nutrition online curriculum. The reason we start where we do for this curriculum is because this topic is just so very important. And for many people, even just after going through the first week, about two hours worth of presentation, the material in here can be a revelation. Now, we don't have two hours. We're just going to have to make a, a, make a few key points in about 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. And what we're going to do is we are going to talk about calories. And a simple definition of a calorie is a unit of heat used to indicate the amount of energy that foods will produce in the human body. So simple enough, how much energy can we get from food is measured by calories. So where do calories come from? Well, of course, they come from food. You can also get calories from alcohol. And we don't recommend that people get very many, if any, of their calories from alcohol. So we'll stick with calories from food. Now, food contains macronutrients, and we can see them listed down below here, carbohydrates, fat, and protein, and that is in the order of preference, generally speaking, in the body. There are also micronutrients, things like vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, phytonutrients, and antioxidants, for example. Calories come from the macronutrients. If we break this down a little further, we find on average, there's plenty of variation for each of these things, but on average, one gram of straight carbohydrate contains about four calories. One gram of straight fat contains about nine calories. And I've even heard it suggested that fat may actually contain 11 calories per gram. So we are at at least double if not close to triple the calorie content in the same amount of fat compared to carbohydrate. And for protein, it's similar to carbohydrate in that one gram of protein contains approximately four calories. If any of you would like to learn more details about this and some of the ranges and how they came up with these things, you can type in the term at water factors into a search engine and you'll get a little bit more detail. So because we see that fat is more calorie dense than carbohydrates and protein, we might come to the conclusion that all else being equal, lower fat foods will be lower in calorie density than their higher fat counterparts. And indeed, that is quite correct. Let's take a look here at a banana versus an avocado. And we're looking at calorie density, the amount of calories that you can pack into a certain weight or a certain volume of food. And in this case, we're going to look at calories per weight. We'll look at per pound, per gram, and per kilogram. A typical human stomach that is full will have about a kilogram in it. A pound will fill a typical human stomach up about halfway. So banana and avocado are very similar in many ways. But bananas, as many of you know, are low in fat. And avocados, we're looking particularly at the California Haas avocados, the one that has a dark skin that's bumpy, it gets dark and soft when it's ripe, um, you know that avocados are high in fat. So the banana has about 400 calories per pound, and the avocado has about 758 calories per pound, or nearly double, 
And that makes sense because you can pack more calories into fat compared to carbohydrate or protein. Now, I mentioned that this is true, all else being equal. But what if all else isn't equal? Let's look at an example here. Let's look at medjool dates. Gooey, sweet, delicious. They're, they're really incredible. Now, dates have a similar low-fat macronutrient profile to bananas, but they come in at 1,250 calories per pound, significantly more calorie-dense than the high-fat avocado. Raisins come in at about 1,360 calories per pound, even more dense. They're not quite as gooey as dates. They're, they're a little more dry, a little more concentrated. And now when we'll really make the point, we'll look at dehydrated banana, over 1,500 calories per pound, compared to the fresh banana at 400 calories per pound. That's nearly four times the calorie density. Now, once the banana is dehydrated, the macronutrient profile, carbohydrate, protein, and fat, um, is about 95.5, roughly. But what's occurred here is by taking all the water away, or a lot of the water away, we have concentrated the calories, and we have made that food more calorie-dense, and you're packing in just about twice as many calories per pound in a dried banana, low fat, compared to the high fat avocado. So what, of course, is the difference between a fresh banana and a dehydrated banana? It is the water content. So in other words, the water content of a food is a much greater influence on calorie density then the fat content is, otherwise known as the macronutrient composition, if you want to look at all three macronutrients. So in other words, low-fat dried fruit is much more calorie-dense than high-fat avocados because the, low, the fruit, the dried fruit, is low in water and the avocados are more medium in water and that water content is a bigger influence than the fat content. So low-fat raw vegans, and this star is here, uh, and that means, or anyone else for that matter, can gain weight by eating significant quantities of dried fruit. And I'm going to say they can gain more weight eating dried fruit, even though it's low in fat, than they can eating avocados that are higher in fat, because again, the dried fruit is more calorie dense. Now, what happens, though, is people oftentimes will not eat the avocado, but then they'll go for the food twice as calorie dense because they're trying to keep their fat content down. And there, some of them are actually gaining weight by doing this even when they don't want to. Now, this doesn't mean by any means that everyone... Uh, in the raw fat, in the low fat raw vegan camp is making this mistake, but some of them are. And a properly implemented low fat raw vegan diet can be extremely healthful, but we can't take the fat out of context. If, for example, you're keeping your fat down to 5% of your calories, that, in my opinion, is not sustainable healthfully over an extended period of time. And there's many reasons for that beyond the scope of this little excerpt from our first week. So that brings us to, at last, the number one mistake in raw food diets. And by the way, there are several contenders for what may be the number one mistake, uh, pitfall, challenge in raw food nutrition. Uh, but after some debate, we think that this is number one, not having a fluent understanding of calories and calorie density. There's two primary subsets to that. One is the one we're talking about now, eating too many high calorie dense, low fat foods over concern of the macronutrient profile or the fat content of food, and therefore skipping things like avocados that are lower in calorie density than dried fruit. Now, speaking of fat, 
I want to make it very clear that not all fat is the same. And there are various people that talk about the differences between the types of fat, raw fat versus cooked fat, plant fat versus animal fat, but I'm going to suggest that there are significantly more distinctions that one can make in the different types of fat. For those of you interested in that topic, once our webinar is done, you can go ahead and go to our rawfoodeducation.com website. And over on the right-hand side, underneath where you see where you can sign up for our email list, you'll see two YouTube icons, one for my channel, one for Dr. Karen's. If you click on the one for my channel and then you scroll all the way down to the bottom, I don't have a pile of videos, maybe 20 or so there, the second, third, and fourth one from the bottom is a three-part series about essential fats where you can learn in more detail about that for those of you who are interested. Additionally, if you like watching webinars, also on our Raw Food education.com website under the Mastering Raw Food Nutrition tab, there are two other webinars that we did this year, and you can click on the one that says May 2017, and in the center, you can get some additional information about essential fats, including some of my clinical experience working with long-term raw food vegans. And in consulting with many of these people over the years, I have found that if people eat a little bit higher in fat than some camps recommend, that those various nefarious effects that are talked about, your cholesterol and your triglycerides are going to go up and you're going to become insulin resistant and all these other things are going to happen, that as long as the diet is appropriately healthy on the whole, I have not seen those things. And this is when I'm working with people one-on-one, -on -one, including analyzing their lab work. So I don't actually see that. Now, when we get into not just a little bit more fat, but really high fat levels, as we'll talk about coming up in a few minutes, that's when various problems start to occur. And let's actually go on to that so you can learn how to avoid that mistake as well. So in talking more about fat, I'm going to start out with a question to all of you. And here it is. How many medium heads of romaine lettuce would you have to eat to get the same amount of calories as you would find in a half a cup, which is the rough equivalent of 120 milliliters or 46 soaked almonds? Well, let's take a look. Here we, we see a, about a half a cup of soaked almonds, so they've soaked up some water to decrease their calorie density significantly compared to the unsoaked ones. And you can see we have a much larger quantity of three good size heads of romaine lettuce. And I was very specific about this. I weighed every head of lettuce after I cleaned it and dried it and, and cut off the bottom. So the thing is, if you were to eat all three of these heads of lettuce, which would not be an easy task. Okay? I, I think that would be really challenging for most people. And I could probably do it if I hadn't eaten much that day and it was at the end of the day and I had been physically active. But I think for a lot of people, it would be very difficult. If you were to eat all of that lettuce, you wouldn't be close to the same amount of calories found in this much smaller quantity of soaked almonds. Let's make a little more room now on the table for all the lettuce that we're going to have to eat. So we'd have to eat a fourth head of lettuce. We wouldn't be there yet. We'd have to eat a fifth head of lettuce. We'd have to eat a sixth head of lettuce, and we still would not be there. We'd have to add almost another half a head of lettuce in order to get the same amount of calories as we did from those almonds. Those almonds are much lower in water content, that's most important compared to the lettuce, and they're much higher in fat content. That's what makes them so much more calorie dense. Now, if I take this, uh, the top pieces of the lettuce and spread it out around the outside, that's what we will see in this next photograph. So here we go. You look at all that lettuce. You could not eat that in one sitting. You would have a heck of a challenge getting that lettuce in 
even in a day. That is a massive quantity of lettuce, and that has the same amount of calories as this very small quantity of soaked almonds. So here we go. Takes six, almost six and a half heads to get the same 328 calories as we find in that half a cup of soaked almonds. By the way, I added up things and I looked at the macronutrient profile of this meal, of this 656 calorie meal that again, you'd have to spread out across the day to eat the lettuce, although you could eat the almonds all very quickly in a few minutes. 42% of the calories came from carbohydrates, 43% of the calories from fat, and 15% from protein. You're like, look at all that lettuce, and then look at the little bit of fat source, but 43% of the calories come from fat. Now, it is actually feasible if you're really dedicated to eat three heads of lettuce. So if you ate those three heads of lettuce and those half a cup of soaked almonds, 54% of your calories would come from fat. Now, if you're really dedicated, you could do that. But realistically, most people aren't going to eat that much lettuce all at once. So let's X out those two heads and let's just look at this one head of lettuce. And let's say, for example, you were to mix these almonds up with maybe some zucchini and some spices and you were to make a nut spread or a nut pate and maybe you could spread that pate on the inside of the lettuce and, and wrap the lettuce up into little uh, you know, lettuce nut boats or something. And you would, you'd have to not load each piece of lettuce up too much with the nut pate. But if you got through that whole thing and, and spread the pate on the lettuce and, and ate all of it, you would probably think to yourself accurately that you ate an awful lot of lettuce and not very many almonds. And a lot of people would actually estimate that they would get maybe 20% of their calories from fat because they think, oh, lettuce is low in fat and I ate so much of it and I only ate a few of these almonds, a few of this nut pate. But as it turns out, 64% of the calories would come from fat. And generally speaking, when people are trying to eat a largely to all raw diet and they are avoiding fruit, they end up without even realizing it, eating a very high fat diet. So again, here we have a lot of lettuce, a few almonds, and we have 64% of the calories from fat. That's getting really high. Now, when I have worked with people at levels where they're, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70% of the calories are coming from fat, then we see the lab numbers not look so good. Despite eating less fruit, their blood sugar is actually higher because that much fat, even if it's relatively healthy, contributes to insulin resistance. That's not good, and that raises blood sugar. Their cholesterol levels creeping up. Their triglyceride levels are going up. And more importantly, they are not feeling their best. They're feeling kind of sluggish and dense and, and really not getting the best out of a raw food diet. Now, when I generally... Uh, depends on the individual, but generally speaking, I encourage them to eat less fat and to replace those calories with fresh fruit. And the great majority of the time when people do that, they feel lighter, they feel healthier, their brain is more clear, they're in better moods, their athletic performance improves significantly, and life is just better that way. So that brings us to summarize calorie subset mistake number two, and that's eating too many high calorie dense, high fat foods over concern of carbohydrates or fruit. Now, by the way, I've also worked with many high fruit eaters over the years. And one of my favorite things to do is to get to their blood sugar part of their lab work profile. And 19 times out of 20, their blood sugar looks excellent. We also sometimes measure some other indicators besides fasting glucose like A1C and insulin. For those of you familiar with those that I know our students have heard a, a, great, day, a gr great amount of detail about, and um, those numbers look excellent also. So fruit is not the enemy. 
We just want to eat it in appropriate amounts in an overall balanced diet. So these last few charts will help summarize what we talked about here in this section. Here are the major things that people eat on raw food diets and their corresponding calorie densities. So again, if somebody's really concerned about their fat content and and they're not in, you know, and they're in the low fat camp, they're probably not going to eat too many green sprouts, although they might have a few, but these other foods that are higher in fat, um, they're not going to be interested in. Now, if you're eating a lot of vegetables and a lot of fruit, you might average maybe 200 calories per pound for your diet or about a half of a calorie per gram. In order to get 2,000 calories worth of food, you would have to eat 10 pounds, which is about four and a half kilograms of food to get 2,000 calories. That is just too much for people to eat. So what do they do? They, well, they don't have the avocados because, right, they don't want the fat. So they'll eat dried fruit to get enough calories. Another thing sometimes happens too is if it's already hard to get enough calories because the food here is so low in calorie density and fruit averages three times the calorie density of vegetables, people tend to go lighter on the vegetables and heavier on the fruit. And while I'm not against fruit in any way, people need to eat lots of vegetables in order to maintain excellent health over the long term. But when it's too hard to get enough calories in and therefore you start skimping on the vegetables because they're so low in calorie density and you're running out of room in your stomach, you run into all sorts of problems from a lack of vegetables. And, and that's a mistake that we would prefer not to see people make. Now, if you are concerned about fruit because you've heard carbs are bad and fructose is bad and fruit is bad, and you believe things like all fructose turns to fat in the liver and you've subscribed to some of those other myths, then you're not going to want to eat fruit or dried fruit. So veggies and green sprouts, you literally cannot get enough calories eating those foods to maintain your body mass over the long term might be helpful in the short term because you can fill up and feel full on very few calories, but you cannot do it over the long term. Now, I do have sprouted beans and grains here, and there are some people who sprout these things regularly, and as you can see, they are more concentrated sources of calories, and they're low in fat. But I have to say realistically, after having so many students and consulting with so many people over the years, most people do not stick with doing that over the long term. You constantly have to be soaking and sprouting and rinsing things and planning ahead. So this is actually the exception rather than the rule. So in that case, you don't get enough calories from the veggies and sprouts. So what's left? Avocados, nuts and seeds and oil and, and maybe coconut. And people end up eating an awful lot of fat and they feel too dense, and that does not give them the opportunity for the highest level of health. Now, whether we're eating too much dried fruit, too much fat, uh, too much beer for that matter, and getting a beer belly, when we have excess body fat, that can do things like increase our blood pressure. It can contribute to insulin resistance. And when insulin doesn't work right, our blood sugar increases. And when our blood sugar gets higher, glucose reacts with other things in our blood and actually damages things. It sticks proteins together, and these things are called glycation reactions. And there's a whole host of issues that go along with that, including the promotion of inflammation. When people have excess body fat, they tend to have excessively high levels of sex hormones that can put them at risk and fuel the growth of hormonally related cancers. There are other methods besides the glycation reactions that, uh, excuse me, where body fat contributes to inflammation in the body. 
And when we have excess body fat, we are consuming excess calories and we're contributing to excess production of free radicals in the body. And those are molecules that damage cells in our body and accelerate the aging process. So to summarize here, fat is healthy in the appropriate context. We don't want excessive levels, but we don't want to be afraid of fat either. Number two, fruit is healthy in the appropriate context. We do not recommend that people become fruitarians. Vegetables are incredibly important, especially over the long term for optimal health. But as long as you're getting plenty of vegetables in your diet, fruit can be perfectly good to get a great deal of your calories from. So we encourage everyone to find the balance of, of fruit and fat and vegetables, lots of vegetables that works for them and find something that they can stick with over the long term. Now, unfortunately, when people are not fluent about where their calories come from and therefore they make the mistakes that we've talked about today, then number one, that doesn't work for them. And that's unfortunate. By tweaking things a little bit, they could have found a raw food program that works for them and allows them to get the health benefits. When they don't do so, they've got a bunch of unrealized health potential. And that alone is unfortunate, but it gets even worse when those people get frustrated and then they get very vocal about things and they turn their experience of their particular approach to a raw food diet not working to a general model that raw food diets are not healthy for anyone. And then they make videos about that, they blog about it, they write books about it. And then we have people who are starting out on the path to health, who are looking to improve their diet and clean things up and, and get healthier. And they read or hear some of these people who, who a raw food diet has not worked for, and that discourages them from ever even starting on the path, discourages them from the very thing that could help them the most. And then when we start to think about all of that lost health potential, oh my gosh, that really starts to hurt. And that, that is a huge stick because there's so much of this out there these days. It's a huge stick for Dr. Karen and I. Now, on the more positive side, the carrot for us is when people start to understand these things and they implement a raw food diet in a healthful manner that they enjoy, that's sustainable over the long term, and they feel good and their brain works better and they're more clear and they get off medications and their athletic performance improves and and they, they know that they're going to be around to see their grandchildren grow up and, and get married and and all those types of things. And, and, and again, that, that's a huge carrot for us when people are doing it in a way that works for them. We are committed to providing scientifically accurate, useful information that you can apply in the real world in a way that's easy to understand, practical, and very encouraging without these unnecessary limitations and without the lack of calorie density fluency that causes people to make these common mistakes. We want all of you to be absolutely as healthy as possible and realize your true health potential. Today we've covered just a tiny little piece of what we have available for you to learn. In our previous Science of Raw Food Nutrition curriculum that we taught in person, we had to pack a lot of information into each day to make the best use of our students' time because they were away from home. The students loved the class, but we noticed consistently there wasn't always enough time for questions and answers and interaction with us. Even though we were in the room with them, most of the time was spent with us giving the presentations. And we had to take lunch breaks and bathroom breaks and finishing on time to let people go do their other activities into account. And there never seemed to be enough time for questions and answers. And also because there was so much information each day, that didn't let all the information sink in in order for the students to be able to think about questions that they wanted to ask us.
The good news here is that our new, updated, revised, expanded, new and improved online curriculum doesn't suffer from these constraints. We're offering this class online now, and it's called Mastering Raw Food Nutrition. It covers the span of 12 months, and it begins on August 30th of 2017. The time commitment is about two to three hours per week. So two hours per week, you will watch professional quality videos similar to what you see here on this webinar. You can watch these videos on your own schedule at any time you would like, as many times as you would like. Each time new videos are released, they stay there for the entire course, so you can always go back and review. We also include a very comprehensive set of notes, including charts and graphs that you see in the videos. These notes are not just a transcript of our spoken voice put into paragraph form. They're very well thought out. They took us a lot of time to put together, and they have bullet points and, again, the charts and graphs and everything you need in there in order to be able to follow along with the videos. So when you're watching the videos, you don't have to try to write everything down as fast as possible. Most of what's in the videos is there in the notes, so you can just follow along and then add a few additions as you go. These notes are also useful as lifetime reference material. Throughout the course of the year, we physically mail our students four separate notebooks, and that constitutes about 900 pages worth of information, as well as all of the references that we used in the scientific literature to put these notes together. In addition to that, we have live, direct interaction with us three to four times per month in conference calls that will be held at a few different times on Tuesdays for this coming year. This can really make all the difference because if you just get all of the content and go through it yourself, oftentimes in these self-paced courses, people don't actually keep things up. But when you have access to us and your opportunity to ask questions and hear comments about that week's interaction or that week's material is coming up, you're so much more likely to keep up with things. There's other courses out there. They have you do all the reading and they collect the fee. And on paper, it may look like those courses offer more hours than we do, so therefore they're a better value. But our information is condensed down to make the best use of your time. So these near-weekly conference calls really help keep people on track, and it creates a lot of interaction with us. You meet with in small groups with your fellow students, and that is very helpful. We also have a Facebook group for people who wish to get to know each other and have a little bit of extra interaction. Dr. Karen and I post some extra content in the Facebook group, oftentimes that comes up in the conference calls, and sometimes we even give some fun extra credit assignments where we'll have students go out and do some things all designed to help learn the course content. A couple of months ago, we sent a survey out to our current Mastering Raw Food Nutrition online students, and we've gotten some great feedback. Trent from Arizona says, Doctors Rick and Karen are an absolute wealth of knowledge. Their clinical and research experience is very beneficial during the course. The course itself is laid out nicely, so topics can build upon each other yet still have variety. The weekly conference calls were just as valuable as the content. These calls allowed us students to ask questions and collectively learn from each other. I know one thing for sure. I would not have the confidence I do now to educate and inspire others if it wasn't for this course. Thank you, Drs. Rick and Karen. We talked before about listening to one source versus trying to figure it all out on your own. 
Another way of looking at a similar concept is this idea of exposure versus cohesion. So on the one hand, in our curriculum, you will be exposed to many different ideas and many different perspectives. However, because you'll have such a solid foundation to plug all of that into, you'll learn how to integrate the various pieces of the puzzle into a comprehensive whole instead of being left confused. Now, because there's two of us and we both have extensive knowledge and background and education in this and we've done some independent research, we, we provide a lot of perspective. But because we're a married couple and we're both really into this stuff and we talk about it all the time, that allows everything to come together cohesively. So admittedly, we're pretty nerdy and we're actually proud of that. We, we love research and we love intellectual pursuits. And because we both have the same kind of background, including our doctoral degrees, there really is a great synergy that we have that we can bring to our students. Another current student, Anne-Marie from Paris, says, I find very helpful to have the point of view of doctors who are really impartial in their opinions and who explain things with scientific studies and fact, not just philosophic thoughts, and who do not sell anything. I feel very lucky to be able to ask any questions each week and to always receive a good response. I learn a lot. I understand much more now, even though I studied biology and have read a lot of books about raw food before the class. I hope there will be a second year for us to enter even deeper into the science of raw food. Thanks to you, Karen and Rick Dina. And she said elsewhere on the survey that I love my weekly videos. So to summarize, you get 100 hours worth of very solid video content. That can be equivalent to many hundreds, if not thousands of hours of reading and watching videos and trying to figure all of this out yourself. It is condensed down to make the best use of your time. We have those comprehensive notebooks that you saw a few slides ago, about 900 pages worth that you get that go along with the videos and are useful as lifetime reference material. Throughout the course, there's roughly 50 hours worth of interactive, we'll call it classroom discussion that you access through the computer or over the phone where you get direct interaction with us in small groups. We also make recordings of all of those calls and all of the recordings are available for everybody to listen to. Even if you can't make a call that you normally make, let's say one week you're busy during that time, you can enter your questions in advance. Then we will answer those during the call and then you can listen to the recording afterwards. So in other words, we are there for you regularly throughout the course, interacting with us, getting clarification, hearing from your fellow students, and really allowing all of the information to sink in and make a lot of sense so that can empower you to stay on the healthiest path possible. We also have the Facebook group where you can interact with your fellow students and get some extra interaction and extra information from us. We also have an educator component of the course. As many of you have discovered, when you start eating differently than the rest of the population, you automatically become an educator because people see what you're doing and they have questions for you. We go over how to answer various questions that come up in a way that creates rapport instead of conflict because emotional and psychological considerations are important for health also. Then for those of you who wish to make this education of other people a bit more formal or even go about it professionally, we have PowerPoint presentations that we give you that you can go out and use to teach other people. So the content of all of this is very, very solid, and many students have just been amazed at how much they learn in a short period of time. Going back to the theme of our webinar here is that when you have such a thorough 
and solid, comprehensive understanding of plant-based and raw food nutrition, it is so much more likely that you will stay on track because when the misinformation comes along, often by people who are very well-meaning, that's not going to throw you off track. You'll be too well-educated to be susceptible to that type of misinformation. And having confidence in what you're doing and knowing that it works and knowing that you're on the right track gives so much peace of mind. And, and that part of it is just so invaluable for keeping things up over the long term. Our student Rita from Portugal, we, we had a few uh, quotes here that were really long. We're, we're just going to share one of them with you as well as a couple of the shorter ones to keep things moving. So Rita says, the Mastering Raw Food Nutrition and Educator course online has been a great learning experience. Starting from nutrition basics, further developing to subjects specifically related with raw food nutrition, and even expanding to some lifestyle aspects not directly related with nutrition but extremely important for optimal health. This course has exceeded my expectations week after week. With a very complete set of materials, video and audio classes, comprehensive sets of notes, question and answer session recordings, and the excellent teaching skills of doctors Rick and Karen Dina. The information is very easily assimilated and is accessible to anyone with no nutrition-related background. Having a scientific background, my usual need to find scientific evidence to support facts has been fully met with this very solid, scientifically-based course. In addition, my nerdy curiosity regarding the further details on the topics lectured has always been satisfied by Drs. Rick and Karen Dina, who very nicely answer all of my questions in the weekly question and answer sessions. Despite the large range of topics covered, the information is concise, very accurate, and truthful to the references, highlighting the trends in the literature when contradictory results are present. In addition, by sharing their personal experience as raw foodist as well as their clinical experience, Drs. Dina helped me see how things we learn in theory come down into practice. Everything makes sense. I have attended to each online class with much enthusiasm. I understand the fundamentals and am 100% confident about the knowledge I have acquired along these months. While before the start of the course I had little knowledge about nutrition, now I'm able to explain and discuss many aspects of nutrition and health-related issues. This learning experience has empowered me to take well-educated decisions that will benefit my health as well as help those who are interested in optimizing their health. And Rita is earning her PhD in environmental science, and she's studying how microorganisms can be used to clean up pollution on Earth. So when we spoke to her about a year ago prior to the class, we were so excited to hear about that and we're really honored to have her as a student. So again, she's got a real solid interest in science from earning her PhD, and she found this information very valuable. Eva in Israel is a low-fat raw vegan coach. She said about the class, I'm lucky to have found the teachers I hoped for. They are thorough and coherent. I find much value in their scientific knowledge that is mind-blowing, and also they are happy to teach, and that makes learning fun. Thank you, Drs. Rick and Karen, for this valuable course. I will definitely make it as a stepping stone in my professional development as a natural health consultant and coach. Our student Cynthia said, I have been practicing a raw food lifestyle since 1998 when I did an internship at the Tree of Life with Dr. Gabriel Cousins. I really appreciate Dr. Rick and Karen's scientific approach to the subject of raw food nutrition and have appreciated learning the scientific basis 
of why this way of living is so beneficial. So Cynthia's been at this for quite some time, since 1998, and she was already very knowledgeable about raw food nutrition before the class. She said in another part of the survey that she has learned a lot and the information has very much solidified why this way of living, uh, as she said, is so beneficial. So she's been very happy with the course. And Cynthia is somebody else who has a real biology degree, and she's actually a real field biologist, a scientist who goes out uh, to natural settings and studies wildlife. So we always appreciate when when the scientists um, appreciate the validity with which we teach. Now, having said that, we realize that most of our students do not have a science background, and that's no problem at all. We make it easy for everybody to understand. Gail in Florida said, the content alone is invaluable. No price can be put on this course because it represents their life's work dedicated to living and teaching that you can sustain a raw food lifestyle. You are not just getting a course, you are getting their lives. They have taken their medical knowledge, background, and experience and have simply put it on paper as well as in videos and in the conference calls. Um, so we appreciate Gail's comments there. And we have so many other great testimonials from sending our survey out from our current students that you can get access to at rawfoodeducation.com under the course testimonials tab. We'll mention just a couple of other quick ones here before we wrap up. Susan in Italy says, This course has provided me with a real understanding of metabolism. I feel my feet on a firm ground of understanding of what I am doing and what I would be doing in eating any sort of diet. And Jill in the UK said, I've been really impressed with the course, learned a huge amount, and enjoyed it thoroughly. I'm not a raw vegan currently, but I'm certainly eating more raw now. So these two testimonials speak to that no matter where you are on the spectrum of diet and health, our course provides support and encouragement by giving you accurate information in an encouraging, easy to understand manner that allows you to connect with real information that you can use to start to take the next steps on your health journey and be wherever you want to be about that and feel confident in it. You'll be receiving an email shortly titled, Want to Take Your Raw Food Knowledge to the Next Level? And if you're interested in learning more about how this course can support your desire to achieve your health goals, we invite you to respond to this email where you can click on a link to set up a time to speak with us directly either on the phone or via Skype. This way we can answer any further questions you may have about the class and help determine if mastering raw food nutrition is a good fit for you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're so happy to have had the opportunity to bring this information to you so you can break through some of these hurdles and achieve your best level of health. Thanks again for watching, and we wish you the best of health.